This is a continuation of yesterday's lectures. It's on the technique uh, for pedicle access, uh, whether you're doing uh, augmentation or you're doing uh, pain or ablation procedures. Uh, so uh, we'll dive right in. Uh, this depiction is the three-dimensional anatomy. Uh, we as spine surgeons uh, see this all the time because this is the path that our instruments take when we're putting in pedicle screws. This is the path uh, that we use uh, for doing uh, cement augmentation procedures. This is the path we use for pursuing tumors. Uh, the important thing is uh, remembering this uh, wire right there. That wire is uh, drawn around the waist of the pedicle. It is what you see on your AP view as the uh, the uh, on foss uh, 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 pedicle. It gives you an idea of the dimension of the narrowest part of the pedicle. And it gives you an idea where the middle of the pedicle is. Pedicle routinely is about 21 millimeters, varying in uh, people's size and people's heights. But essentially, that's a fairly close, uh, less than an inch. Uh, and so as you're looking at this on your um, uh, X-ray, the trajectory of the pedicle and the access to the vertebral body uh, are all uh, governed uh, by uh, the uh, middle of the pedicle. And when you learn to see this in three dimension, you'll be able to uh, successfully navigate the vertebral body using the particular approach. Uh, the way to set this up ideally for the least amount of radiation and the most efficient use of time is to have biplanar fluoroscopy. Not all um, work environments allow for it because each one of these fluoroscopes is about 150,000 used. Um, so uh, what you see on this one is the lateral is approaching from the side. The arc goes over the head of the patient and the gun is hidden under the drape here and drawn close to the patient so that the arm of the AP can slide in. Both orthogonal AP lateral x-rays are obtained before you start, and you merely rotate the patient to the x-ray machine. So the x-ray machine for the surgeon is always oriented to uh, the perpendicular axes of the room, and the patient is brought to that plane uh, at each level. And that means you don't have to do adjustments. The patient comes to the orthogonal position, and then you do each. So when you're doing uh, uh, osteoporosis, scoliotic, collapsed, kyphotic deformities, you already have enough challenge on your hands that if you let your mind be oriented to the vertical lines of the wall and the horizontal lines of the floor, your accuracy is dramatically improved and your mental state is remarkably enhanced. You become more confident. So always bring the patient to the x-ray. And once you've established uh, that the pedicle, so let's say this, hello? Nope, let's try this. Let's say the pedicle of interest at the level of interest. You want the superior border of the pedicle at the level of the end plate. You want the end plates uh, nicely delineated. You want the spinous process centered so it looks like a pair of owl's eyes and its nose. And that way you know that when you come to dock uh, on the pedicle, uh, starting from the out outer part of the pedicle at the level of transverse process, you course from outside in that line that you see for the eye is the center of the pedicle. And once you pass below it, uh, you know uh, uh, that you're now under the medial border of the pedicle at the center of the pedicle's height. And if your pedicle and your trajectory are correct, you'll, you'll end up in the anterior third of the vertebral body. So again, 
uh, here's a bipedicular approach using the pedicle uh, as your entry point, uh, reaching the posterior longitudinal ligament line on the lateral simult simultaneously with reaching the medial board of the pedicle on the AP, you know that you are in the safe posterior third of the vertebral body. So again, we'll, we'll go through this uh, sequentially. So on the lateral, you are in the mid aspect of the pedicle height. On the AP, you are approaching the medial border. So as that trajectory continues, you will pass and be in bone. You always confirm that when you are at the posterior longitudinal uh, ligament uh, level with the tip of your stylet and you are under the medial board of the pedicle, you are intraosseous and you are safe. If you approach the um, uh, medial board of the pedicle on the AP and you are uh, well above your start point, is too lateral, and all you do is lift, migrate a little bit more medially, one or two millimeters, and start the exact same trajectory with a different starting point that's slightly more medial. So that's, uh, and these are examples of being uh, too far medial, too far lateral, uh, and if you are too far medial or you are too far lateral, where you deploy will also be where you deploy your balloon, where you deploy your device, where you deploy your pedicle screw, will ultimately end up too far medial or too far lateral. So let's uh, review this again. So when you look at these start points and you uh, learn to recognize that this is the center of the pedicle, your start point here on the outer aspect of the pedicle matches this start point. The middle of the pedicle matches these trajectory points. And the medial border of the pedicle, as you push deeper and deeper into the body, put you at the base of the pedicle. And the pedicle flares outward. So if you are, oh, let me back that up. So if you are at this position uh, on your AP and lateral, so the blue position at the base of the pedicle, you are safe and you are on track to reach the center of the vertebral body in its anterior third. That's a, a very important trajectory, because once you are on that trajectory, you now have options. And the options are that you can complete the procedure as a bipedicular procedure, just do the same thing on the opposite side, following trajectory, each step down. Or if you wish, you can accomplish uh, the treatment of the vertebral body from a unilateral position using the curette to cross over. This one does not display as well. The subsequent slides display better. But in this one, the medial board of the pedicle is right there underneath the curette. We've crossed the midline from a unipedicular approach and reached the medial board of the pedicle. So let me um, advance. Uh, this is balloon placement. Uh, so uh, here we're going to go through the steps of, uh, again, approaching from the lateral board of the pedicle on the AP, coursing toward the medial board of the pedicle on the AP, simultaneous with reaching the posterior longitudinal ligament level on the lateral. Those are the key landmarks on your way in. And here you see a, a, a cement augmentation a, a drill reaching across the midline between the two pedicles from a unipedicular approach. And you can see that the drill is in the anterior third of the vertebral body on the lateral, and it's in the center of the vertebral body on the um, AP. If you uh, deploy from this position, 
Hello. Be friendly and move. Lee, you might advance for me. I think the battery is dying. No, Lee. Oh, that makes it interesting. Yeah, so uh, what, would, what I'm going to do for you in, in these steps, uh, earlier Doug had said yesterday that what you want to do with cement augmentation is you want to go from pedicle to pedicle. Lee, could you advance for me? I think the, uh, uh, I think the um, one slide forward, please. The remote's not working. Okay, so now we have the curette in the same position as the drill. The curette is centered. Uh, on the vertebral body between the pedicles. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, thank you. Oh, great. Yeah, but the battery's dead. So now the, the uh, curate is uh, deployed, uh, but it hasn't reached the medial board of the pedicle. Uh, as the curette is deployed, you can pull backward from the anterior third to the junction of the middle and posterior third. What I routinely do is uh, once you're all the way forward on the lateral in the anterior third of the vertebral body on the lateral in the center of the vertebral body on the AP, I just mark the, uh, with a blue marking pen or a Sharpie, uh, the sterile Sharpie, just mark the curette. You are as deep as you ever need to go. When you deploy the curette and you pull backward to reach the junction of the so there it is, that's your maximum depth. You uh, would mark uh, up on the curette at the top of the introducer sleeve with a black mark. That's as deep as you ever need to go. Uh, when you deploy the curette and you pull backward, you reach the junction between the posterior third and the middle third of the vertebral body. That's a safe place to stop. If there are fracture fragments and you continue to pull the curette backward, you can displace them. Uh, so you want to be uh, mindful that you want to create a cavity, but you don't want to create a complication. So that's a safe place to stop. You deploy the balloon, and uh, what you can see if the, no, it's not working today. Uh, it, 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 what you can see in the balloon is the balloon went from the medial border uh, of the pedicle on both sides. And on the lateral, it is from end plate to end plate. So when you go to cement it, you uh, cover uh, pedicle to pedicle. So you see the pedicles above a line. So your pedicle, you can see the outer border of the pedicle, your pedicle to pedicle, and your uh, end plate to end plate uh, on the lateral. And if the volume of cement approximates uh, six cc's, you're uh, very close to the sweet spot uh, in life. That's unipedicular and bipedicular approach. Any questions? Derek? Uh, do you um, attempt to treat the underlying osteoporosis in patients? Like yeah, yeah. That's, that's absolutely critically important. And it's a huge deficiency in the practice of medicine. Not only is there a large population that is hugely vulnerable. They are also uniquely dispossessed because although they are mothers to all of us, their husbands are routinely deceased. They are routinely alone and in many circumstances they are profoundly osteoporotic and they haven't been treated for decades. So when you're seeing three level cement, you have a massive problem and you're trying to steer that back around. All of us should be very engaged in uh, osteoporosis because it's a epidemic and it's a, it's a big dilemma, you know, a very disadvantaged and vulnerable population. Yes? Um, at a time, what's the most levels you compare at one time? Well, so I laugh about, I, I try to make light uh, in, in some of my patients because uh, they're, they're four or more levels. But the, the payer uh, environment disadvantages us for doing that, but compassion compels you to, because beyond three, you start running into uh, resistance from the payer. But I have patients in my practice who have 12 uh, of these in a row, and 
I try to make light of it and tell them when they get to heaven, they'll, they'll be slower flying around than everybody else because they waste so much more uh, in their spines. Uh, but in the rampant uh, osteoporotic whose uh, T-score is in the minus uh, three and minus four category are those who are uh, hormonally or uh, steroid base uh, osteoporosis, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a horrible challenge. It's a horrible challenge. Great question. All right. Thanks, everybody.